What's happening players? Ryan here from Base Matter taking you through the core bass learning program. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at defining music and understanding what it is. We're going to investigate how to use the progress tracker of the charts that's available, and we're going to see if we can understand some of the different personalities of bass players and learners out there. Let's get to work. Alright guys, let's take a look at defining music. Now there's two very specific approaches to looking at this answer of music out there. One of, it is, one of them is very philosophical. Music's a personal expression, it's an artistic liberty, it's a place that I apply my creative license, and so on and so forth, and yes, all those answers are certainly correct. However, one of the ways that I would like to describe music to you today is much more academic, and the reason why is I want to take a 30,000 foot view of music to help it be more learnable for you, so it's not so intimidating, especially if you're new and you start hearing about all of these different components to music out there, it can be quite daunting. So, if I were to ask you a specific question of, what's music? Some of the more popular answers that immediately start coming out are, well, it's a combination of notes, it's a going to be, depending on the key signature and what kind of chords you're using, and if you're using alternate tuning or not, and yes, all of those, all of those answers are certainly components of music, but the big 30,000 foot view for me to help make this as learnable as possible and not daunting is identifying and defining music as a combination between rhythm and pitch. Let's look at those two things for a second here. Rhythm is simply a pattern. It doesn't even have to be the exact same pattern over and over again. It just has to be a pattern. And we see rhythm in our lives all the time, whether it be the agitator on our washing machine, or the ticking of a clock, or the tick of a metronome to a drummer, to our own fingers playing bass. Rhythm can be found almost everywhere that we look. Now pitch, pitch is just going to be a specific tone. And of course, if we combine a bunch of pitches together, we start getting different types of tone. And if we combine enough pitches, we get chords. And if we have enough pitches of a particular tone, we can start identifying specific sounds of instruments. If I have enough pitches for the right tone, it's gonna sound like a bass or sound like a trumpet. So by combining rhythm and pitch together, as far as the 30,000 foot view of music, everything else easily falls underneath it. So whether it be chords, or whether it be triads, or whether it be triplets, or whether it be playing 16th notes, or at 180 beats per minute, or playing a flam on the drums, all of those things combined are going to easily fall underneath a blanket category of rhythm and pitch. Using that approach to music is going to hopefully make it easier for you to start absorbing. Now music is of course beautiful. It is of course elegant. It is of course complicated when it needs to be and when it's appropriate and also when it's not appropriate or when it doesn't need to be difficult. But music is very beautiful from an expressive and philosophical standpoint. But for the sake of learning how to be a stronger musician, the 30,000 foot view of music is a combination of rhythm and pitch. Now, that takes me into the next portion of this particular conversation, which is how to use the progress tracker. So the progress tracker is a free chart that you can get on the website. Go check it out as soon as this video is over. It's free, it's a nice high resolution PDF, no strings attached, go pick one up, and it lists out a bunch of information on there. And it's a way for you to be able to track your progress. You can mark things off the list as you learn them, whether it be triads or modes or playing at 120 beats per minute consecutively and playing eighth notes with it, so on and so forth. It's a great tool to help you measure and see the success that you have. It's also a great tool for you to be able to take to a bass instructor and have them help you work through those materials on there. So the progress tracker is a great tool, again, totally free, and it links right back to the, the second video I think I did, or the third video about creating the perfect practice regimen of identifying a goal. 
once you know your personality, which we'll talk about next, you'll be able to go to the progress tracker and take the pieces out of it that are relevant towards the goal that you've identified. Now, let's talk about the next portion, the second chart in the book, which is going to be the identification between feelers and, and mechanical style players out there. Now, I teach about 1,500 or so one-on-one -on -one bass lessons a year. And I, I, I've taught a lot of lessons, and I've learned a lot as I've gone along the way. And one of the biggest observations that I have is, for the most part, I can put my students, as they first start learning bass, into one of two categories. On one side, we've got the mechanical players, and on the other side, we have the feelers. Let's go ahead and see if we can create a, a quick description of these two sides. Mechanical players, and I'm a mechanical player by the way, so I'm going to raise my hand up there and point out that I'm a mechanical player and I really wish that I was a feeler, but it's okay that I'm not. Mechanical players are great at communicating information as far as the musical uh, conversation that's taking place. Mechanical players usually do a really good job at focusing on the music theory aspect, understanding how music functions and being able to receive information from others in the band about musical input of try a minor seven flat five there instead, or go ahead and put in the dominant chord there, or see if you can slow that down, or see if you can put a crescendo there. We start, uh, mechanical players love the vocabulary, we love the information, we love the process of how things happen. Mechanical players also have a deficiency. One of the biggest deficiencies that we can have is a confidence in our playing. And this can be a really big problem when it comes time to be in the studio or on stage and even hurt our professionalism if we have to ask unnecessary questions because we haven't developed the feeler side of our playing as much as we should have. Things like coming to, coming to a gig and coming to a show and having to say, hey, what key are we in? What's the song? What's the chart? What's the chord progression? How fast are we going? What's the tempo? So on and so forth can really be a hindrance and slow things down. Although that information is extremely important and very necessary and very relevant for a lot of things you're going to do out there, it's oftentimes something that you can pick up pretty easily just by listening. So one of the most important things for mechanical players to focus on First is developing a stronger ear to become more confident and just sitting in and starting to play in whatever the situation might be. Information is of course wonderful and powerful, but the information's also usually available and all we have to do is use our ears to help identify it for us. Now let's talk about the feelers for a second. You feelers out there, I've always been jealous of you and here's the reason why. You pick up your bass and you start playing and you sound great. It is such a beautiful thing to work with a feeler out there because they're just able to be so in tune with what's going on that just this music just oozes out of them. Now, of course, one of the deficiencies that I've ran into with some feelers out there is if I start asking them to do specific things or if somebody's trying to get something out of them and say, hey, what did you just play? Feelers oftentimes don't play the same thing twice. They couldn't explain to you what they did or describe to you the notes that they used or the numbers that they used or the tonalities that they used. They just simply did it and it came out and you have to wait for the next magic show to be able to see that same thing again. So. Feelers, as awesome as it is to just be able to pick up and comf uh, confidently and comfortably play, one of the biggest areas that I suggest feelers start looking at right away is going to be spending some time in the book out there and doing some more music theory so you can start learning the actual vocabulary and the language behind music as far as its written form and its audible communication form as far as describing what you were actually doing. Now, as far as the feelers and the mechanical players out there, let me just be really clear. I don't believe that anyone is specifically one or the other. But I believe that our learning personalities and our learning styles will lean towards one way or the other. And it's very, very valuable information to have. Here's a trick for you. Whatever you want to be is probably what you're not. So if you want to be a feeler really, really bad, you're probably not. If you want to be a mechanical player really, really bad, you're probably not. Now here's something interesting to think about in the first place. Of the two different personalities, who do you think is most attracted to bass lessons in the first place?
oftentimes it's mechanical people. So again, I'm a mechanical player. No shame if you're a mechanical person out there. And if you're taking lessons and trying to get this info off of YouTube, you might be a mechanical person. And also you might be a feeler out there that's figuring out pretty quick that you've got to learn some new information to get things going. That covers the personalities of learning styles out there. Neither side is right or wrong. Neither side is better or worse than the other. It's just a great way to understand what you are so you can maximize your learning right away and go back to that progress tracker and start looking at the pieces of information on there that can A, help you as a feeler and help you as a mechanical player and B, help grow both sides musically and help you become a stronger player and a stronger a stronger musician in general that wraps up this conversation guys thanks so much for checking this out this is ryan here from bassmatter.com don't forget you can go to the website and download all of the charts that we talked about today for free and you can subscribe to our newsletter at no strings attached it's also free we're going to have a lot of great information coming out please find us online like us on facebook follow us on twitter follow us on instagram find us on google plus and subscribe to this youtube channel there's going to be a lot of great information continuing to come out of here that i that i hope is helpful for you guys Ryan here signing off. We'll see you at the next lesson, which is going to be how to start learning the notes on your fretboard. And we're going to use a pretty sweet bass riff to get that going for you. You guys have a good day and we'll see you at the next lesson.